Welcome everyone to a new tutorial. This is the third based on the colors of the Hawaiian Islands and today we'll be doing Oahu. This design was inspired by the yellow elima flowers that grow along the beaches of Oahu. It's kind of a ground cover shrub and it has these wonderful yellow flowers that are made into lays and you can also add them to salads, believe it or not. I also wanted to add an element of surfing. Uh, Hawaii, Oahu is famous for its North Shore surfing and um, you can't think about surfing without thinking about the big kahuna, Duke Kahanamoku. He is the ambassador of Aloha and has such a wonderful story. He's from a large Hawaiian family of six boys and three girls, descended from Hawaiian royalty, and he introduced the sport of surfing to the world. And he also won five gold medals in the Olympic Games for swimming. Um, he once rode a, a monster wave at Waikiki for over a mile, and he was the sheriff of Honolulu, re-elected 13 times. So I really wanted to honor him in this color scheme, showing the yellow flower and the waves of the North Shore surfing. So we're going to be using a 3.7 inch art stone that I made from gypsum cement using the Happy Dotting Company mold. I let it cure for two days, painted it black, and now I am marking some guidelines to make a five segment uh, circle here that we'll be using because the Leilani uh, flower has five petals on it. So I'll be marking this, drawing out the five guidelines with my General's charcoal white pencil. And then I'm going to mix up some acrylic paints, including white, yellow, golden sand, orange, red, green, turquoise, and light blue. That will be our color scheme today. To get the bright yellow, a lot of people ask me, how do I get a good yellow? How do I get a good orange? I mixed up this um, heavy bodied acrylic with some golden fluid acrylics to boost the pigment saturation and to get a very vibrant yellow and a vibrant orange. And those paints will be listed in the comments along with all the other paints I used. Again, we'll be using the tools from Mark's Mandalas and they are numbered. So if you have these, you can follow along and just use the same numbered tool or you can use whatever tools you have and just sort of make them fit the stones that you'll be painting on. We're starting off with a large golden sand dot in the middle of the stone and then we'll be putting a small red dot on all of the guidelines just as close to that center dot as you can without touching. And here's the tricky part, you're going to fit in two more dots in between those. Just filling up that space, trying to make sure that they don't touch. So you want to make sure that your red paint isn't too thin so it doesn't bleed out and just form a blob. Now we're switching to the orange and we're going to put five medium orange dots right on the guidelines. Then switching to a larger tool, we'll be putting five large orange dots right in between those just as close to that red center ring as you can get. This represents the inside of the Elima flower. So five medium orange dots on the center of the larger orange dot. Just look across and try and get that as centered as you can. Now we're switching to the yellow paint and putting five large yellow dots on the guidelines. I had a little bit of a slip here on the first one. It wasn't quite perfect, so I wiped it off with a Q-tip, got all of it off before it dried, and then I just reapplied that dot. I've also learned to tap my stone to make the dots flatten out a little bit. So now I'm switching to this wonderful golden sand color 
and I'm adding same size small dots around the large gold dot. This is something we talked about in the previous tutorial about uh, taking your time and making sure that you get the spacing right on these. And we're going to do this on each of the large gold dots. There. Now moving on to make some large dots in that golden sand color. And they will be placed in between the guidelines right up against that small orange dot. And these were a little bit too peaked. My paint was a little thicker, so I just swirled them and tapped the rock to get that to flatten down. Now I'm going to add a yellow dot right next to the guideline. It's just kind of a strange spot. We haven't done this before, but we're going to be going around that uh, golden sand dot using these yellow colors and we'll be getting smaller and smaller as we walk our way around the dot but starting out with a pretty big one right next to that guideline and then switching to a smaller tool and doing the same thing adding a smaller dot below and next to the golden sand dot make the dot turn the stone until you've done five and you can tell how this is starting to make a swirl. Move down another size and do the same thing. We're going to be going all the way around this larger gold dot. Just continuing to go down a size in tools. And then once I got to the number six tool, I decided to just walk those dots up around. And this is going to give us our five petal flower. The flower itself has kind of scalloped edges on it and they tend to overlap. So this is a pretty good representation of the shape. Now we're switching over to the green and we're gonna add five medium green dots off to the side of the guideline, right in that space. And then switching to a smaller size tool, and we're going to walk those dots down along the edge and around and walk them six times. There's one two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And do that all the way around. And this is starting to build our wave for surfing all the way along the flower. Switching over to the turquoise now, we're going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to start with the larger dot Place it right next to the green one, a little bit lower. Then switch to the smaller tool, and we're going to walk those down. And then finally, we'll be doing the same thing in the light blue paint. And this will be the top edge of our wave. Just sort of hugging along the shore here along our stone. And it gives a wonderful swirled effect. Now adding a yellow top dot to the center of the stone. I'm going to brighten up these uh, golden sand petals a little bit. And then adding golden sand top dots to the yellow dots. Now adding some yellow top dots to the orange and I'm pushing them toward the center of the mandala so they look a little bit more like a flower petal. And then adding some yellow top dots right in the center of the smaller orange dots. Now back to our yellow paint and centering some yellow top dots 
on the largest petals, brightening those up, and then we're going to brighten up the edge a bit by adding some white top dots to that row that we walked around the outside of the petal. And that's just going to make the mandala have a bit of a glow. Really working on these old school tones kind of looks like a postcard from the 1950s, which is kind of what it was going for. And then we're just going to fill in that space with a couple yellow dots. Just walking those up. I could get two or three dots in that space. And then adding a couple white top dots to the inside edge of those uh, orange petals. One in the center. And then a little white top dot for the outside petals. Again, just brightening them up a little bit. And then finally, a couple yellow top dots on the smaller yellow, yellow um, dots. And I think that is it. Yeah, all done. And we're going to let this dry. And I decided to do the art resin on these. I'm going to show you how to do this again. I allowed the stone to dry overnight and then I'm mixing up equal amounts of the two bottles in my little measuring tablespoon here. I filled it up halfway and then I filled it up the rest of the way with the hardener. And I'm going to pour that into my little bowl and mix that up for about three minutes till it gets almost opaque. Lots of little bubbles in it. And get on my gloves and I'm going to be adding this to the stone just a small amount on the back side with my fingers and I'm going to rub that all the way around to the front side and just keep rubbing that all in to make sure it gets in between all of the little dots nice and flat on the back and then I'm going to set it down on my plastic cutting board and let that dry for two days and it will dry to a wonderful glassy finish. Just looks beautiful. So I hope you'll give this a try and stay tuned for our next island which will be Maui. Thanks for watching everyone.